David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another ink review. Uh, today I have for you an ink from Papier Plume, which is their limited edition ink for the San Francisco Pen Show, which is coming up this very weekend. Uh, thanks go out to the good folks at Papier Plume in New Orleans for providing this ink for review. Uh, if you should ever find yourself in the French Quarter of New Orleans, I would highly recommend checking out the Papier Plume shop. There aren't too many legitimate fountain pen stores in the United States, and so it's always fun to visit one when you can, uh, especially one in a cool location like the French Quarter of New Orleans. Uh, it's right down the street from the New Orleans Historic Voodoo Museum, so it's quite the colorful neighborhood. In order to take a closer look at this interesting link, why don't you please join me over here at camera two. So here is Papier Plume Marina Green. Uh, it comes in a 30 milliliter bottle. Uh, there are a couple of cool things going on here with this bottle. First of all, I've always really been a big fan of the dipped wax treatment that they give the caps on their inks. Uh, they dip the cap in wax and then they use a wax seal to make this Florida Lee design. Uh, I also like that on every bottle, the way the wax drips down this bottle will be different. So every bottle is unique. Uh, on the label here, we have a creative use of a picture of San Francisco Bay. I believe this is Golden Gate Park, uh, but the name Marina Green is incorporated into a street sign. Uh, and then over here, maybe I'll get a little bit closer so you can see it here. But this sign right here is a take on an iconic sign for the San Francisco 49 Mile Scenic Drive. On this version, it actually says 30 milliliter and scenic ink. Uh, I just think that's kind of clever. Uh, little details like this uh, make me smile and remind me of my home state. Uh, even though I've been in North Carolina for a dozen years, I'm still a California boy at heart. I grew up in Southern California, San Diego to be precise, and uh, even though Northern California is uh, greatly different in scenery and culture than Southern California, I'm very fond of the area. Uh, not so much their sports teams, but their area, yes. Here's what the ink looks like on a swab. Uh, here it is with a Roaring Klingner Verdua. Uh, here it is with one of my favorite green inks, the Diamine Apple Glory. Uh, here it is with the Mont Blanc Irish Green. Uh, another Papier Plume ink, an Ivy Green. And then a couple of lighter greens. We have a Caron d'Ache Delicate Green. Uh, and then a Seis Kreuznach Lime Green. Uh, if you've ever wondered what I use for these ink swabs, I use these Marmon word cards. Uh, the problem is that they announced that these were no longer being produced. Uh, and that when they did, a couple of years ago, I purchased a number of these, enough to last me a lifetime. Uh, this one here contains all of my blue inks. As you can see, I have way too many blue inks. Uh, but there is an excellent, excellent alternative to these, which is the color ring, which is produced by Anna Reinert of the Well-Appointed Desk blog and her husband. Uh, you can find these available at a number of retailers. And that I believe that uh, Anna has a special uh, San Francisco pen show version of the Colo ring that'll be available at the show. So look for that if you happen to be attending. Now, this is a good example of how the uh, very same ink can look different on two different swabs. Uh, here it is, what it looks like on the Marmon uh, word card swab, and then this is what it looks like with the color ring. Uh, the paper on the color ring is a higher quality than the Marmon. Uh, I applied both of these in the very same manner with the same density of ink, and you can see that it appears to be much darker on the Marmon, uh, which is, uh, and then also there is a bit of as you can see here, a bit of feathering on the Marmon as well, which is not present on the coloring paper at all, or on the Tomoe River or the Rhodia paper, which you will see here in a little bit. Uh, in addition, I really feel that the color ring produced more of an accurate representation of the color. Uh, one of these days, I just need to suck it up and re-swab my entire collection in these books because uh, they really are so much better. Okay, enough talk about ink swabs. Let's take a look at this ink. 
So here we have the Papier Plume Marina Green. Uh, for this top header here, I used these, this Pilot Parallel, which is a 2.4 millimeter. Uh, it's, it's nice for doing calligraphy and things along those lines. Um, I do find that on this Rhodia 80 gram paper, uh, the ghosting and bleed is a little bit on the medium side. With some of the heavier applications, you start getting out just a tiny bit in there. Uh, I say that the shade is low to high. We'll We'll discuss that in a little bit. I know that's a weather large range. Uh, and that uh, in regard to sheen, I'd say it's rather low. Uh, in regard to the pens that we're going to test today, uh, first up is a something a little bit different. It is the Monteverde Engage, which is actually a rollerball which uses bottled fountain pen ink. It's an interesting concept, and I uh, thought it would be an interesting substitution for a fine nib. So, we have the Monteverde Engage. And we'll say this is a rollerball. Substitute for a fine nib. Uh, next up, we have a pen that if I ever did a most underrated pen video, it would. this is a pen that would definitely make the list, and that is the Cross Peerless 125. It's a solid looking pen, which has a very nice sailor nib on it. So here we have the Cross Peerless 125. And this is a medium nib, a medium 18 karat gold nib to be precise. And then finally, we have a re recent acquisition of mine, a pen that I had my eye on for a number of years and finally found one at a price that I deemed to be acceptable. And that is the Visconti Blue Ripple. Uh, that this uh, nib pen has one of Visconti's old 18 karat gold nibs uh, on it. Uh, and th that uh, it's very, very nice. So here we have the Visconti Blue Ripple. And while this is still a medium nib, We'll just call it medium plus because you can see that this medium nib lays down uh, a lot more ink than this cross peerless uh, medium nib, which is a, a could be ex uh, expected because it is a, more of a Japanese nib since that is a sailor nib uh, compared to this European uh, medium nib here. Uh, that. It, typically, during my ink reviews, I tie in a movie. And I thought about discussing a film set in San Francisco, like Vertigo or Escape from Alcatraz or even Dirty Harry. But in the end, rather than talking about a film set in San Francisco, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the city itself and some of the things I really enjoy about the area. So, first of all, with the Monteverde Engage... Tower has some of the most breathtaking views in all of San Francisco. Uh, here's a look at Coit Tower. It sits on a hill just outside of downtown, and from the top, you have an incredible view of the entire city. Uh, looking at downtown, it almost feels like you're looking at it from an airplane or a helicopter. Uh, and then you can turn to the right, and you can see all the way to the Golden Gate Bridge. On, and uh, on a clear day like this, the view is amazing. Okay, next up we have the Cross Peerless 125. Uh, 
San Francisco has a great pen community. Uh, the last time I was in town, a number of members of the local pen club, they called themselves the Pen Posse, got together for a little impromptu meeting. We actually met at that building right there. It's called the Ferry Building. Uh, it was really nice that a group of folks were willing to get together on a weekday right after work to hang out, eat some ice cream, and sit on the wharf and talk pens. Um, I've heard nothing but great things about the San Francisco Pen Show, and uh, one of these days I'd like to get there. Okay, and then finally, with the Visconti, In my opinion, In-N-Out burgers are the best fast food burgers in the country. Uh, whenever I visit California or any other city that has an In-N-Out, I have to visit. Uh, I have traveled a lot around this country, and I will try any regional restaurant that is well known for its burgers. I have had your Five Guys. I have had your Whataburger. I have had your Shake Shack. And while those places are great in their own right, in my opinion, they do not hold a candle to a classic In-N-Out Double Double. Uh, now, in-N-Out's french fries are another deal. I'll admit their fries aren't the greatest. They're serviceable, but the burgers are beyond reproach. Uh, I'm taking a trip out to San Diego in a month, and there will be more than one stop at In-N-Out. Okay, back to this ink. Uh, that uh, I do find that the flow is good on this ink, uh, and that in regard to drying time, on a medium nib, I find that it's dry after 10 seconds, and on our medium plus, it took about a little between 15 and 30 seconds in order to dry out. Uh, Papier Plume, uh, Marine Green, they've actually added some UV protection to this ink. Uh, it's something that, uh, it's the first that I'm aware of, uh, which is nice. Uh, the next thing here is that I do find this ink to uh, flow very nicely, but it really has a low surface tension, so I find it to be very wet. Uh, and that the end result is that this ink will perform well on higher quality papers, but if you, you might not experience the best results when using lower quality paper. Uh, and then finally down here, I said that with fine nibs, the ink is a uh, light lime, but with broader nibs, it's more of a Kelly green. Uh, and it's just one of those things that uh, the, the heavier the ink flow, the darker the color is going to be, which is kind of where I said the sheen of the shade up here was from low to high, because uh, that you're going to get a very low amount of shading when you are uh, having the thinner nibs, but then you're going to get a great deal more shading when you are uh, looking at the more at the broader nibs. Let's see how this ink reacts to water. Let's put a little bit of water on here. And as we let that sit for a moment, let's take a look at the chromatography. Green inks are some of my favorite to test. They have a tendency to separate out into these distinct blues and yellows and greens. Uh, I just think that it's kind of cool. Uh, this is what the chromatography actually looks like. You can see a nice kind of baby blue here that uh, leads into some nice uh, yellowish green and then some darker green here on the edge. But it doesn't look like a solid green at all. Let's go ahead and wipe this off. Uh, and while it did retain some of the color, uh, I wouldn't necessarily categorize this as a waterproof ink. So there you have the Papier Plume Marina Green. Uh, if you would care to purchase this ink, it retails for $10 and will be available at the Papier Plume table at the San Francisco Pen Show. Uh, if there are any bottles left over after the show, at that point they will be available on the Papier Plume website until they are sold out. Uh, typically, inventory of these limited edition inks doesn't last for long. Uh, thanks again. Go out to Papier Plume for providing this ink for review. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.